Welcome to Michigan Reimagined, presented by T.A. Forsberg and Wagoner Financial. And here's your host, Chris Buck. All right, so each year the Michigan Celebrate Small Business Organization publishes their Michigan Top 50 Companies to Watch. Custom-built design and remodeling of Okemos was selected as one of these coveted positions from a statewide pool of candidates. And here to discuss what makes custom-built a special small business is the owner, CEO, and visionary, Mr. Michael Flory. Welcome back to the show, Michael. Hey, Chris. How you doing? Good, I'm good to be fantastic. with you Fantastic. Yeah, I love having you on. Your story is fantastic. And if you hadn't heard before, you can uh, archive uh, Michael Flory, a custom-built, to hear deeper parts of his story. But let's start off just for those who don't dis- decide to do that. What kind of services does custom bill provide its customers yeah we're a we're a design build company and we like to say that uh, we take the place that you live chris and we turn it into a home you love and we do that through both designing and building and we in the residential remodeling world uh, probably 95 to 98 percent of the jobs have very little planning and design done in advance. So we do both the design and then we construct and build the projects for people. Got it. So people, even people who buy a new home, you probably are like, this fits 80% of my needs. I don't love these certain components, right? Yeah. Yep. And a lot of new homes come with unfinished things like an unfinished basement or okay. they didn't get the landscaping finished. So often there's some landscaping or you know, deck building it out yeah deck or outdoor living space uh so and there's i mean oftentimes again even with new construction uh you know the design i think having a you know it's one thing to have an architect that designs the plan it's another thing like the soft sides of a design a lot of those things are picked out during as the project's going along there's allowances they're working off of there's pressures on budgets and there's a lot of times where a homeowner gets overwhelmed and they start you know, kind of settling maybe. And so with the design, you know, if you spend the time up front designing things, you can kind of pick out what you want. Also, it helps us to control both the time and the budget of a project. So if we're not waiting on materials or waiting on a homeowner, you know, in, in, in your busy lifestyle, which most of our homeowners, they have a lot going on. They have things that they love to do, hobbies, families. And so we take that off their plate and we give them their time back while turning their home into a place they love. Nice. And so the reason people call you is, um, do you find that there's like life changing events like that, that precipitate stuff? I think about aging in place or even the work from home. Yeah. Right. Phenomena. It's like, I don't go to the office anymore and yeah. I, I'm tired of sitting at a card table with a crappy chair and I want to office space in my house. I mean, is yeah, it that yeah. kind of stuff? Yeah. yeah. I mean, aging in place has been something that's been growing since I've been in the, in the business, you know, as the baby boomers are aging out our largest you know population group. Yep. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, moving to smaller homes or just wanting to stay in their home and make it more usable, maybe a first floor ensuite bedroom or right. whatever. But as you mentioned, COVID really introduced a whole new world for us. And we've seen both on the side of uh, like people wanting a home office in a place that's private where they can focus and the kids are somewhere else. You know, we're finishing out a lot of basements. We're also seeing a lot of people that want to have a place for their um, aging parents to come potentially right. live. So we've had a, yeah, multi, so we're yeah. seeing a lot more that we get calls, I mean, especially during COVID with with everything that was going on and and people wanting to be with their family and they couldn't because they were you know in a facility that it, you know weren't allowed to people to go in out for safety. So people are thinking like, how do we keep our family together? So we love those calls. So. That's fantastic. Okay, good. Uh, how did you get started doing custom built? Well, uh, custom built started in uh, really about 2004, but prior to that, uh, my father-in-law was a builder and uh, I was going to school and my wife was going to med school at Michigan State and uh, I started working with him. I was always, you know, interested in that, but I, I was always really interested in like building a business and having something that could make a difference. You know, I shared a little bit of my other story, but losing my parents at a young age and having to really suffer as a child from 10 to 20 and uh, really being one of fortunate people to break out of some really dark, dark times. Uh, I've always wanted to make a difference. And so custom built is a business. It wasn't, you know, a lot of, you know, I could have just continued to just be me and a couple of people, right? Most remodeling building companies, even, you know, new homes are, are, they're usually one or two or five people max. Um, I wanted to build a company that we could have a broader impact, uh, both, working with more homeowners, uh, but building a team 
uh, and then uh, simultaneously being able to be involved in the community. You know, I love serving on uh, the Ellie's Place board, uh, again, being going through what I went through as a kid to be able to give back and find people that are, you know, come from underprivileged places or just um, aren't seen. You know, there's so right. many there's so many people growing up in our community that grow up in real impoverished or situations like that. So so my heart was to build a business, to be able to have the resources, to be able to give back. And that's still our mission. We're still we're still continuing to grow that. So that's fantastic. <clears throat> you know, and, and I, I, I'm assuming that video is still there. But one of the videos on your website shows you and your family yeah. having the big meal yeah. in a place that yeah. you created for yourself. Yeah. And you yeah. talk about how that is. So knowing more about your past than what you've just alluded to, Family certainly matters. The space for family to interact certainly matters. Yeah. And custom builds really just an outward expression yeah. of you wishing that for other people yeah. to find yeah. that space, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think about like when a homeowner calls me, you know, we're typically working with, you know, higher income earners because to do design build, that's more expensive than say DIY or self-manage, yep. uh, but they own a home first of all, but then they also are higher earners. But I think, you know, when I think about the home, it, so it doesn't really matter if you grow up in a home or if you're living in a home right now where, you know, finances are super tight and you're barely making your rent every month or you, you're on assistance and you need help. Like there's those stresses, you know, but when people get done at the end of the day, they got to lay their head somewhere. And if that place can be a place that is more peaceful. So I think of like our homeowners, when they call us, they're just not satisfied with the way their house is anymore. They got a living room that, um, you know, they love, but it, we need some built-ins in it. Or, right. you know, we <clears throat> have a, we have a deck, but it's dilapidated and it needs to be upgraded. Those are, those are needs. But I think for all of us, um, the human, all, all of humanity wants a place to call home. They want a place where they can go home. It's safe. It's, it's a, a place that brings joy to them. And so <clears throat> because we get to work with, you know, people that are taking nice homes and making them better or, 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 you know, fixing something, a kitchen that's 20 years old that they want to make new. The other one worked, but they can uh, afford it and make it different, make it more functional. But on top of that, like I think about everybody, the desire for everybody is the same. They want a place that they love, you right. know? And yep. uh, so we love working with our homeowners uh, and then we love giving back. You know, uh, there's several organizations that we've partnered with uh through, you know, um, being able to both serve, give of our time and give of our, 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 our resources and all these places, uh, probably the top of my list, I get to sit on that board. I've met so many other great organizations, business owners that are involved in that uh, organization. And, you know, I'd been around forever and losing my parents as a 10 year old living in a, in a, in, in staying and having that happen in my own home. So to be able to transform somebody's place and when, you know, the stories that I love is when, when we get done with the project, Chris, and we, we go back and we, we talk to the homeowner and, and, or they put a Google review out there or something like they just, every time they go into the space, they pinch themselves. Like they just <laughs> love it so much. Or they had this party, you know, they have parties and they, right. Showing off. Their yeah. Views. Showing yeah. off their places. But, but it really comes down to more than that. It's like if people want to, people want to be in a place where again, like it's home, like it's, it's a safe place, whether it brings joy to them, love, you know, all of those things. I mean, typically I find that our homeowners are family centric or they're really involved in the community and they're doing a lot of hosting at their home. So even if they don't have a family, they're, they're community, man, it's like all about community. And so I think that's to be able to remodel homes and think about the work that I've had to do in my life to, to get to where I've gotten to it and still working, man, um, that it's this remodeling process. There's a design, there's something I got to change in my life. There's something that I got to grow at. Right. And, and there's books and there's things to help you. And then you hire coaches and you hire professionals to, you know, you've, you've been a part of that in my life, you know, just been able to, you know, run things off of you and experience and all that kind of stuff. So that's really, the same process it takes for us to grow as human beings, you know, remodeling a home as a, as a version of that. So Got it. <clears throat> well, I want to give a nod to someone who's also in this kind of space. When it comes to creating the best living and working environments for the community, no one does a better job than my friends at the Forsberg Real Estate Company. Brent Forsberg and his team create vibrant, holistic communities that inspire growth and encourage belonging. Focused on building stronger connections for people, a Forsberg project is always in tune with balancing relationships to create an optimum human experience. 
Since the 1950s, Forsberg has been enhancing the quality of life and the communities that they serve by following the principles of regenerative growth and aligning the resources and tools available. Reach out to my friends at the Forsberg Real Estate Company by calling 517-349-9330 or check out their website at lansingrealestate.com. So as a, a, a custom design remodeling company, you're not just hammer swingers. I mean, you've got a lot of really interesting roles within custom built. So talk outside of the actual trades and the and yeah. the, the folks that are doing the delivered work. Yeah. What other types of roles do you have in your company? Well, because we're, uh, you know, a uh, mid-sized, smaller remodeling company, we have a close to 25 full-time people at custom built. You know, we have a leadership team. We have our finance department. We have some, you know, uh, accountant roles. Yeah. Um, so I have a... Uh, I have that part of the business. Then I also have a marketing uh, manager and a couple of people on that team. We actually have a videographer and a blog writer on on our team because we're putting out content to try to help people, whether they're looking for design build or they're looking to just DIY a project. Uh, we're putting that out there. Um, but the the thing that probably was my biggest challenge as a, as a remodeler getting into the industry was the design piece. Right. I mean, it was the part that I had to get up at 4 a.m., come into the office, and try to figure out how I'm going to put together a plan or a scope of work so that I could hand it off to the guys in the field. Right, and, right. And that side of the business, I think, you know, as a homeowner or as somebody that's going through a design build, if you've never done it or you don't pr manage projects, like the design is so important. So we have, a, in about 2015, I hired um, Josh, who is now our design manager, design and production manager, hired Josh, and that was just such a uh, a moment in the history of custom built where it was, it, it really opened up the window for us to really be, be able to start growing the business because where you get up, hung up is most homeowners come, they're like, Hey, I want to build the space, but you got to first think about it. It's all the little details. And when you get when you got 10 projects going on and all of them have little details that haven't been answered, all of them are homeowners midstream in their lives and they got vacations coming up and they got, issues that happen, you know, cr you know, crazy crises, whatever. And now you're trying to work with 10 people and you can't get them to respond. And then they're stressed out because so taking all of that and, and, you know, moving that up front and making that happen at the beginning is it's pretty difficult mm -hmm. unless you have the right people. And so since then we've been able to hire, um, we have two, um, we have a lead design designer, Christine, and, um, she's got a, a bachelor in science from Michigan, university of Michigan down the street here and architecture. So wow. we have her on staff and then, uh, we've hired two, um, two, um, design assistants from Kendall college recently. So we have two that assist Christine and help with as belts and are learning the industry, uh, that have a passion for design as well. So I would say that's probably, you know, uh, I think sometimes when I wake up in the morning, I think about, and in, 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 in some of what it's like to run a business, I mean, you have all of these parts and pieces and you think, man, how did we get here? Like, do I really need all this? Because we're always trying to think like, how do I provide more value? Do I, you know, and then you're trying to grow and, and, and impact more right. people and you know, <clears throat> trying to stay lean. But yeah. Gotta, yes. Trying to stay yeah. lean yet to have a business that can do what we do. You, you have to have those people. Otherwise, you know, in, in previous, you know, before the design team, you know, I had I had to try to hire a third person party, you know, architect, but they didn't necessarily do the selection. So then I had to find somebody to do the selection. So I was working with different showrooms and people driving around. Our customers had to drive around to all these places. Well, we just bring the samples to them into our office and, and, you know, going from maybe hundreds to thousands of hours that people invest in the whole design process and thinking about it all day long and, and then going through the build process and the stress of it, we take that and you know, an, you know, for the ideal situation, we can turn that into about six meetings. And, you know, those meetings could be a total of six hours for the homeowner. Not that they might have some homework to do in between those meetings, but they don't need to really go anywhere because our design team pulls it all together for them. So it's a massive amount of save time. And then we can do a better job on deliverable of, of, of building a project on time and on budget because the first heavy lift, the, de the design portion, which is probably more important in some ways than the build right because without a good design uh the building you'll end up being less than uh, you, you'll think of oh man i wish i had thought of that you know you know one thing that struck me as i was kind of preparing for this <clears throat> this conversation uh looking through your website is you know for a person in the trades you've got a lot of women on your staff and you know i don't mean to be overt about that yeah. but i'm just curious as to whether that was kind of by design is um or 
but I applaud it, right? Yeah. Because I don't think that you see a lot of women yeah. in the trades. Is that was that intentional, or were they just did they have the right brain for the role? How'd that all work out? Well, if there's a story, to there be is had. A, there's a great story. So when I first got into this, I had no background in building and um, my father-in-law like I had mentioned kind of got me into it he was a home inspector but also had a remodeling company and I asked him like hey what do I do to learn more I had again no education no training outside of a high school education and at the time when I got into business it was more of like I want to be an entrepreneur. So I don't know if you ever read the E-Myth book, but yes. it's an entrepreneurial seizure you know like I'm just gonna I, you know I didn't want to work for anybody at that point so my father-in-law said, you, you should join the Home Builders Association. So I, so I jumped in and joined the Home Builders Association. I started meeting people and I would start to go to meetings. And I just remember going to these meetings and it was, it, there was, at the time, this was probably 2004, probably four or five, yeah, probably four that I joined. And, you know, if you got in a room, it was 95% male, middle-aged. Right. <laughs> and, uh, in in most at that time, this was all pre Great Recession. Most were new, you know, kind of the association was was built by home builders and remodelers. I always kind of felt we always kind of felt like we were kind of second class. And then we actually even changed our name to include remodelers along the way. So there's been a lot of progression. And I love our new home people, and they have built the business. Without new home construction, we wouldn't have remodeling to do. So, um, but. I, so when I see something that's not right, right, or I think, man, we can make it better, I try to go in and fix it. And so, and it, you know, being a part of the association, uh, just trying to learn learn the ropes myself, and then seeing there was a, you know, not a lot of women involved, in, both in trades and in the actual companies that I saw. I mean, you might have, you know, somebody that worked in the office. In my heart, growing up, losing my mom at ten years old, and then having three older sisters, I you know, that I had a lot of women in my life and then, you know, just that nurturing piece. And then when you're working with homeowners, I think probably they say about 70%, the women make about 70% of the the design decisions and things like that. Not that the men aren't involved, but having that natural connection, like to me, it just made sense. So yeah, we've been pretty intentional in saying, you know, putting it out there, not that I have a quota, but like, you know, I want to, I want to, and I have five daughters, so, and, 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 and two of them actually work for the company. So, um, being really intentional that the building and the remodeling and this whole industry is a huge opportunity for, for, for women as well as men. So fantastic. Well, um, I, I want to give another nod to my friends over at Good Marketing here at Michigan Reimagine. We tell stories of passionate Michiganders doing great things across the state. Today's podcast sponsor takes the art of positive storytelling to a whole new level. The good people at Good Marketing work with organizations across the state that are having a positive impact on the lives of Michigan residents. They help educate communities on the importance of affordable housing, the impact of wildlife and natural resource management, the availability of workforce development and educational programs. And if it lifts people up and makes communities stronger, then they want to help spread that word. If your organization needs to help communicate uh, the good work that you do, stop by their website at Good Marketing. That's G-U-D marketing.com. So talk about the top 50 companies. I'm really excited to hear that you were one of the recipients. I've had a couple of top 50 companies to watch award winners on the show over the years. So what's the criteria to be placed on that list and what does that celebration look like? Yeah, so I knew nothing about it, was nominated. There was, I think, 500 companies that were nominated across the state of Michigan this year. And then you kind of go through an interview application process. Uh, some of the criteria I know, are you, you have to be somewhere between 750000 to $50 million is kind of their targeted kind Revenues. of, they call them second stage. They're not a startup. It's sort of a second stage uh, company that's looking to growth. But they're looking for companies that, are, that have you know, grown or had some level of success and that, that um, they're continuing to grow or looking to continue to grow. Um, and then you go through an interview process and there's a panel of judges that ultimately land on the, the, the top 50 companies to watch. So it's pretty cool. And that's uh, around the state of Michigan, right? Yep, that's across the state. And so every year there's 50 yeah. companies that, that win this. And uh, you know, I, don't, I don't even fully understand it, but the Edward, understand everything that it has to offer, but the Edward Lowe was the kind of the the foundation, Edward Lowe Foundation. And if you don't know who he is, is an, an amazing, him and his wife were both entrepreneurs and 
they uh, really invented kitty litter. So in Michigan based company, Southwest yeah, Michigan, yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, exactly. And so he started this foundation and really with the, the heart to really uh, because he believed in small business so much to to really help entrepreneurs grow and flourish knowing how hard it can be as an entrepreneur. I mean, it's it, every day. I mean, I'm, I know highly successful entrepreneurs and a lot of times we're thinking like, and I could be out of business in two months, you know? So <laughs> right. with that kind of mindset, it can be really draining. And so they've really created a community and some of the benefits are, you know, there's a, there's going to be a really amazing gala that that's put on. Uh, you get put as part of this class, so you got some networking, but then they offer services. Um, I'm in a round table right now that was was part of this that um, is connecting me up with other local entrepreneurs in different industries. Um, and yeah, just continuing membership along with the honor. Um, and it's it's amazing because they really encourage you to bring like your team to the to the gala. So we're we're taking, you know, some of the people from our team that can come. And it's just a real honor uh, because for me, starting this company from just myself, just you. But as you grow, you realize as an entrepreneur, like I can't do this without my team. And some days that can be a little scary because it's like, I got to let go, you know, I got to surrender right. and, and let this team of people that, <clears throat> that have come around me do their job and, and go out and make mistakes and yep. learn from them and grow. So the best companies have owners that are, you know, working on the business, not in the business, right? Yeah, Where yeah. if you take a month off, that yeah. the machine still turns. Right, right, That's right. a sign of a yeah. well-run operation. Yeah. And yep. I think you are on absolutely. the precipice of all of that. Yeah. So well, that's great. Moving in that direction, absolutely. So Excellent. So, um, you know, what do you owe, you know, that honor to? Is there anything uh, specific that you think uh, Custom Build has done that makes it uh, a worthy, sustainable 50 companies to watch? If you had a company that wanted to be on next year's 50 companies to watch, is there advice you would give them right now on how you've had some of that stability? Yeah, I think, I think kind of starting with, um, with your vision. Um, uh, so I was actually, I read E-Myth a long, long time ago and went through, they had an entrepreneurial leadership program that I went through. I was a three-year program and you kind of learned the ins and outs of business. But so I would say, start with your vision, get it written down and whether you know how to do that or you find some, you read a book, also, you know, recently we um, we use, we use we use EOS as a company now as kind of a structure to help us kind of put all of our you know I'm I, I got seventy five thousand things going on in my brain and right. it's all organized and it all makes sense and I <clears throat> I want to do it all now EOS kind of helps you settle all that down and put it into a plan and so I think really disseminating down to like what do you want to do because my vision is. Our, our core focus as a company is impacting families and everybody that's on the team knows what that means. And it means a little bit something different to everybody. I mean, at the end of the day, we, we want to come into people's homes and, and make a difference and create places where their family will make memories that will last a lifetime. Like some of my deepest, most intimate memories prior to losing my parents was, you know, Christmas time, the cookies, the smelling, the, yeah, yeah. the, the time on the deck, the all those memories that are priceless, right? You can't, you can't put a number on them. Um, so, um, you know, kind of getting back to where was I going with that, Chris? Uh, we were just talking about, uh, advice you would give to people who yeah. want to win. So the e entrepreneur operating yep. system, so, so yeah, Whitman. EOS. So yeah, yep. getting your vision together. That's kind of what I was saying. Yep. So I've, I've always, so I would say to win the award, you got to want to grow. You know, there's a lot of solopreneurs that, you know, maybe wouldn't, but could make a great living being an entrepreneur, but not looking to build a company. So if you want to build a company, I think that would be one thing. And then you have to put together all the structure and pieces. You're going to have to hire some really good people. Um, and then just take one day at a time, you know, yeah. um, you know, as an entrepreneur, you, you know, if you, if you went to the top five con companies in the country and you pulled back the curtains, you know, I think as entrepreneurs, like if, if I, if I get a low review or I have a customer that's mad, like I might not sleep for a night or two, right? right? Yep. You know, but, but the reality is every company is in a growth process. Every company's got issues, you know? So if you pulled back the curtain on these top five fortune 500 companies, like there'd be all kinds of issues. So just remembering that, like, um, the, the, the one saying that I love that I got from Dan Sullivan was, was progress, not, uh, progress, not perfection. So just, Every day, if we're making a little bit of progress, 
you're solving more issues. You continue to do that, you know, like for us over the course of 20 years, uh, we've gotten better at some things and we still got a long way to go. Um, but yeah, so putting that vision down, um, and, and just continuing to believe every day when, when things look good, you feel great. And when things don't look good, you don't feel so great. But if you can get to a place in life where like, you kind of know, like there's going to be the ups and downs. And so when things are, you know, you got to get in, you got to grind and figure it out. You, when things are tough, you know, and then when things are good, you just continue to learn from the past and make it better. And so we can deliver a better product to our, to our uh, clients. So that's awesome. <clears throat> well, it's a fantastic story. The, the, the story of uh, custom built design and remodeling of Okemos. We've been talking with the owner, CEO and visionary, Michael Flory. How can people get in touch with custom built to learn more? Well, we have a, an amazing website that Isabel and our, our marketing team has put together. So if you go there, you can just Google uh, Custom Built Okemos or our, our uh, it's uh, callcustombuilt.com is our web web address. And then uh, you could email me if you want to email me directly, Michael at call custom built. That's C-A-L-L, custom built. And then dot com, uh, as well as you could call us. Uh, people still use the phone and yes. it's 517 uh, 881 Seven one. Well, congratulations on all the success. Thanks for being here to yeah, tell your story. Th- You're on a roll, and uh, the sky's the limit for you, Michael. All right. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, thanks for you. having me. And I'd like to give a final shout out to all my loyal sponsors, Forsberg Real Estate, Wagoner Financial, Triterra Environmental, Good Marketing, the attorneys at Foster Swift, and Keller Williams Advantage and Team. These are great people worth the call. And if you found the show as a one-off, I'd like to remind you to follow and subscribe Michigan Reimagine on YouTube, Facebook, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and anywhere you find your podcasts. My name is Chris Buck. Thanks for listening to Michigan Reimagined. Oh,